Hi everyone, my name is Katie Brumfield and I'm the Colorado School of Public Health Career Services Specialist. And today I have the pleasure of talking with Lene and Christina. Um, would, you, would you ladies mind introducing yourselves and telling us the year you graduated and your concentration? Hi everyone, I'm Linnea and I graduated in May of 2018 and was Community and Behavioral Health. Hi everyone, my name is Christina and I'm the exact same, so 2018 Community and Behavioral Health. I, I do think I sticked around, you know, a little bit after that just to, you know, attend sessions and, you know, get to know professors more. Great. And can you both tell us what is your current job title and where do you work? So we're both consult consultants at um, Frontier Solutions based out of, I guess, DC area, um, although we're both remote. Yeah. And, you know, Frontier Solution, you know, is a consulting firm that mainly works in the disaster relief realm um, and sector. We do work with, uh, you know, COVID-19 epidemiology a little bit and tracking COVID-19. Uh, you know, we develop strategies based on, you know, consumer needs. Uh, creating clearly defined processes to, you know, clarify disorganized operations, offering unbiased opinions for uh, different organizations and just helping to make the most of, you know, technology investments such as uh, GIS. Oh, nice. It's called Bent Ear Solutions? Yep. Okay. Uh, sorry, at first <laughs> I thought I heard something else. Um, no. <laughs> so you're both consultants and how long have each of you worked with Bent Ear? I started in April of 2020. So Christina, actually, we were talking one day um, during, you know, COVID and my current job, I was, was shut down. So I was doing lots of puzzles and, you know, just living that beginning COVID life. And Christina was like, I think my company might have some, you know, part-time work maybe. Um, so I ended up going through interviews and getting hired there. So, and actually the company was pretty small. Christina was one of the first ones. I'll let her tell that. But um, and we've really, really grown the past year and a half, I would say. So I've been there since April 2020. Perfect. Christina? Yeah, so I've been there since August 2019. Yes, 2019, I believe. Um, <laughs> and, you know, yeah, it was a, a smaller company when I first joined. Uh, it was just four other people and then I guess a small board of directors and then we grew quite quickly we're now at 20 uh, employees and oh, I think wow. you know hiring a few more um this upcoming December slash winter um going into a lot of new prop I guess projects in general with um a couple different companies and organizations so it's exciting that we're growing so fast and uh I think we're more than lucky that Linnea came on board uh, she's been absolutely incredible and I love working with her so and you guys met in undergrad at, at Colorado School of Public Health and just stayed in touch afterwards yeah we because since we were both community behavioral health yeah. so we met probably like one of our first first classes I think the first week of school. Really. Yeah, or even like orientation probably. Mm -hmm. um, and we okay. took a lot of the same courses and I'm grateful because Christina, her background, you know, she's done a lot in like emergency management and FEMA and things like that. And so she kind of piqued my interest in that. And I took a lot of electives then in the environmental and occupational health courses and emergency management. Um, and then we both actually TA'd for um, the same professor in emergency management courses and just then stayed in touch after. So that's, yeah. that's cool. I love that because I think, you know, current students, you know, I think you can, as long as you stay in touch, you can really help each other. Um, yeah. I've had students interview with people that they've been in class with before. So Oh, yeah, no, I love that you guys connected and, and were able to do that. So consulting, let's talk about consulting because yeah. I think a lot of people think there's no way I can be a consultant and what do you all do and how do you get into this field and how do you get over that like kind of fear of consulting or the idea of consulting? It just, it sounds intimidating. I mean, it sounds intimidating to me. Um, so tell us about your experience and, and what you do on a day to day. 
Christina, you can go first. Yeah, no, those are all fantastic questions. And anyone can really get into consulting as long as they have, you know, a drive to actually change operations in general and really care about listening and actively listening to different clients and customers and, and then going off that and developing, you know, a unique or tailored solution to a problem. Uh, so what's great about consulting, especially in this realm for us, is we get to work with a lot of organizations and how they prepare or respond to disasters. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the clients we work closely with is the U.S. Courts. So we were, you know, from the very beginning, helping them with the COVID-19, helping them establish protocols within their court system and within their court system. And it's been an absolutely intriguing opportunity to kind of see both sides and see how public health can really intertwine absolutely every part um, of every company. I mean, it's everywhere, uh, which mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize going into it. And it, you know, I think it really depends on how you want to make it and what you make it to be. Um, but you can always find a role and public health has such a unique background that you can really help anywhere. Did you always want to be a consultant, Christina? You know, no, I actually <laughs> never thought about it. I, I worked for another organization called Nusura and, you know, they really developed my interest in consulting and just being able to have that flexibility of different activities and different in day jobs per se, mm -hmm. um, really piqued my interest and in having a constant change in your work life uh, and never having a monotonous day uh, really helps solidify that career path. How many projects at one time are you working on? Yeah, great question. Uh, you know, I would say the most projects I've ever worked on at cohesively at the same yeah. time, it's three, mm -hmm. um, but you can help out with others at the same time. So not necessarily okay. work on that direct project, but just chime in and help out during conversations. Great. All right, Linnea. Yeah, no, I think you brought up a ton of great points. I also never thought I would be a consultant. My undergrad's elementary education. So I used to teach fifth graders. However, you can pull a lot of that, you know, background along with the public health into consulting and I think like the training aspect of consulting once you know you've figured out like Christina was talking about um, tailoring you know solutions to specific problems within organizations and then we develop a lot of standard operating procedures for companies to wow. follow and that all requires training to go along with it so I think that's part of like where I would say my like initial comfort level was is that aspect of it um and you really just like I've learned so much from Christina and the other employees at our company um have just been great and you you really do just kind of like learn the tricks of the actual consulting trade I guess you would say um to you know complement whatever your background might be but I think things like being you know flexible building trust is really important with clients um and just you know being able to listen and actively help them find solutions versus thinking, you know, everything already. Like if you go into something and are trying to push that on a client, it won't work and you won't get that trust in everything. So it really comes down to like managing relationships. And I think being a people person helps a lot too. So those are just sounds, sounds, sounds like a lot of problem solving. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. And, it, you know, I know we do have some courses at um, the public health school that involve GIS, which is geographic yeah. information systems. So, you know, if that's some class that you inherently love and really want to get more involved with the consulting firms and companies, sorry, there's so much background noise part of being at home, but um, there's so many opportunities in that field too, that directly correlate with what you're learning in public health and and just in general. Um, so just really cool opportunities. In I way. highly recommend taking, I looked at the course um, book the other day for a project we were working on. And I know there's GIS courses that um, Colorado School of Public Health offers. And I highly suggest taking at least one because mm -hmm. it is becoming so huge. And like, when I talk to people about what GIS is, I'm always like, well, you know, the Johns Hopkins COVID dashboard, that's like, what I, you know, consider, yeah. I'm like, that's like your basic, you know, GIS mapping tools and everything, but it's come so much further than that. Yeah. And anyone coming out of grad school, I think just having at least a course or two knowledge in that will help you so much with 
career-wise and no, no matter what you go into, but just that's one thing I regret that I didn't, you know, pursue or take. What other skills do you think really make a good consultant? So another course comes to mind, I definitely think branching out and trying some technical skills would be great. Yeah. Qualitative analysis and qualitative research, mm -hmm. uh, I think is one of the top skills that we do utilize, especially yeah. with interviews and um, just going into different projects and finding out what they actually need um, versus what they think they may need, um, which is sometimes different. I do think that is a skill that I really appreciated uh, coming out from uh, Colorado School of Public Health. I think also being uh, really meticulous or detail oriented, which I think everyone in grad school is because you're writing papers, doing things like that, but just, um, you know, really being able that you can make sure, or making sure that you pay attention to details mm -hmm. um, and just being able to stay really organized and then yeah. effective communication. I think also whether it's emails, text, phone, you know, um, because you really don't want things to get like lost in translation, whether it's with a coworker or yeah. a client. Um, I think that your communication skills are like very important to, to have. Yeah. I think being remote, you almost have to over communicate. I yeah. noticed that <laughs> like, I might've already told you this. But... <laughs> in case you didn't uh, know, here it is again. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what are some challenges you faced um, in this career? That's a good question. Um, I think initially coming into it, just that fear. And like you talked about people being, thinking it sounds really intimidating, mm -hmm. um, being afraid, like you're not, you don't know enough or, you know, don't know the right things to say. So I think like building confidence yeah. was a challenge and still maybe is um, just because there are people at our company that have been doing this and are like amazing role models to, to be able to work with. Like, it's just, we're so grateful for them, but it can, it can be intimidating too. So just making sure that um, you do build your confidence and you're not afraid to like speak up and, you know, say what, say what you think, cause you do have valuable, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's opinions are valuable and that too is important. I think like the teamwork or brainstorming aspect of it also. Christina. Yeah. yeah, no, I think you said it exactly right. I think, you know, ensuring that you feel you have that confidence and making sure you believe in yourself um, going forward, as well as, you know, having an opinion. We're all super passionate, especially going to the Colorado School of Public Health. You obviously care about people, the environment, et cetera. Um, and remaining unbiased for your client is something I think mm -hmm. I, in the beginning, especially struggled with. And just making sure, you know, to do what's best for your client rather than what you think uh, in your opinion is best is something that I thought was a little bit more challenging than expected. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> what about a success story or something you're really proud of that you have achieved in this role? I, I kind of think we could potentially have the same success story. That's um, okay. Lene, are you thinking about, you know, the operations center with the U.S. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. But go ahead. You go, go for it. No, so um, we basically helped stand up an operations center for the U.S. court system. Um, and it involves pretty much all the facilities in the U.S. courts and just managing, you know, preparedness and disasters and making sure that they're aware of different disasters or threats that might be coming in, managing incidents that have occurred or are expected to occur and doing situational awareness for them and the whole entire court system. That's amazing. How long was that project? It started um, pretty much right after the Capitol riots in January is kind of when it got stood up and is ongoing and I will be ongoing for oh, okay. ever, hopefully. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> um, long term wise, I think. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, so. Wow. And how many people yeah, usually work on a project? Oh, great question. I think that varies. varies. It does. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think for some of the technology projects in general, it could be like eight people sometimes. Oh. Um, but I would say for most projects, around five seems to be normal at our company, maybe four. Um, but, you know, there are smaller projects where there's one or two. And um, but there's always, you know, 
help and support if you need it from the rest of the company. So a lot usually of team, have, teamwork. Yeah, like you usually have someone managing the project and then at least a consultant and a GIS consultant. They, as long as it's a project that needs GIS work, mm -hmm. um, we're, you know, you try and balance that. But like Christina said, people are always kind of bouncing in and out, helping where they need are needed. Too. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes you can switch on and off projects based mm -hmm. on need. Um, if there's a certain phase of the project that you're definitely vital for and may um, give the best uh, skill set for, mm -hmm. there's definitely, you know, switching onto that project just for a certain period of time, that could be a possibility as well. Do you all, I get this a lot from people that work in consulting, but they love like being on a project, finishing it and moving to the next, like that variety mm -hmm. of projects. Do you guys like that? I haven't gotten to finish a project. Oh. Um, so my, because the, the courts project is ongoing. So I've yeah. never experienced that like satisfaction. I guess this one like side project we did for um, within courts kind of is sort of closed, which was really exciting. But Christina might have a different, she's experienced a lot more um, projects, I would say. <laughs> and Linnea has definitely, I think, been a part of projects that have closed, but she didn't necessarily do the whole beginning, middle and end. I think you've been involved a lot of end. She's just so incredible at helping wrap things up and organize them. Yeah. Um, so, and then courts, you're just invaluable. So they're just never going to let you go. So. <laughs> And, um, but as far as, you know, starting and completing project, that's actually my favorite thing about consulting is mm -hmm. just having that variability in like what you do and every single day. And then the excitement of a new project, um, getting to create it to be your own and organizing it and then getting to work with just a multitude of different people. is yeah. really, really fun. I think one of the coolest things too, that Christina would never tell you, but when a client's call your boss and request you to come back for a new project that's like huge which happened to Christina and it's super exciting because they like basically looked for more work because they enjoyed working with her so much and then specifically requested her so it's that I think is super awesome too because it just shows that relationship she had with the client and then also delivered exactly, you know, what they were looking for. So I think that's yeah. an awesome part of consulting also is when you get to that point with, with a client that really respects you and you respect them back and forth. And the trust. I mean, that's amazing to build that. That's, yeah. That's actually one of our core values. I think oh. at Bed to Your Solutions is trust. I just think that's yeah. so important. And Linnea, you know, you know, she, both of us can call our client whenever I think Kyle's texted you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> clients have, you know, been pretty open with communication and feel as if, you know, they can tell us things that may or may not be open to others or uh, they feel comfortable, you know, sharing with the rest of their organization as well. Sounds like you guys collaborate a lot, probably a lot of listening skills in the beginning and problem solving and, you know, yeah just troubleshooting, I guess, and then working, you know, seeing what works and what doesn't work. And, but that's really cool that you get yeah. to develop that relationship and collaborate as a team, you know, in your organization and with your clients. That is really cool. And that's cool, Christina, that they're asking for you again. Thank you. And you yeah, got, it's really Christina, you, you got to be on site with them for quite a while too, before oh. COVID, right? So I went in, yeah, a few times, you know, I think once a week was pretty regular for a little bit with prior to COVID. And okay. I mean, they were absolutely wonderful. That's what's, you know, clients can be so open and just so welcoming and then provide you all the necessary tools you need to succeed, which is kind of just incredible to see. Yeah, that's so cool. So your organization would they say they're a public health consulting firm or what exactly would they call themselves? I would say more, do they consider it more like public safety? Oh, public safety. Mm -hmm. Public okay. safety. I would say. Yeah. Public safety. Okay. And then do majority of the consultants have an MPH or are you two the only ones on the firm? We're the only two with MPH, right? Oh. I believe we're the only two. Um, I wow. think there's a lot of we do a lot of IT solutions consulting. So I think there's a lot of people with IT sure. and GIS backgrounds. And then we provide that MPH background. And there's a lot of emergency managers on the team too. Oh, that's so cool. 
That's really cool. Um, what advice would you have for someone either in getting their master's in public health or interested in pursuing a job in consulting um, or a prospective student um, that doesn't, you know, would love to be a consultant, but doesn't know how to get there? Um, what advice? Christina, do you want to start? Sure, yeah. You know, I think networking and just making sure you stay connected to those you went to school with and, you know, professors is invaluable. I am ashamed to say I'm pretty bad about it, um, but I'm actively working on it. And I would say, you know, just branching out, seeing what people are doing, seeing what interests you and then pursuing it and kind of being a little aggressive about it, not in the sense of rude by any means, but really pursuing what you're passionate about. Um, I would say as far as skill sets, you know, that qualitative analysis and writing uh, is more important than I realized, grammar, et cetera. And um, also just, you know, reaching out, just see what companies you're interested in. Honestly, instead, you know, there might be a job posting that you enjoy, there might not be, but reaching out to someone at that company and by email um, and saying, hey, I'm really, or LinkedIn, um, saying, hey, I'm super interested in this opportunity, or I'm super interested in this company for these reasons. I think I would add this value to this company. I have these skills and credentials um, and hopefully that will get you somewhere. How, Christina, before we move on, how did you get the job at Bend Ear? You know, actually networking, my husband now um, used to work with someone at the company. Um, so I connected through that, which actually worked out really well. So, you know, networking, kind yeah. of, <laughs> my husband's networking. <laughs> Perfect. So counts. Yeah, great. Linnea? Yeah, I think, um, echo everything Christina said and then just don't be afraid to apply for jobs or like she's saying reach out and ask because you never know and my thing always was you know if you're someone that is a quick learner or likes to learn new things or is open to learning new skills like having that and being flexible with that is something huge like I didn't know what it was like to be a consultant but I was very open you know in my interviews and saying I'm willing to learn like I you know, these are my skills that I think would help but you know I I acknowledge I wasn't, I hadn't, didn't have the experience, but I think if you're willing to learn, you know, don't be afraid to apply for, even if you think it's like a far reach job. Um, and really just, I think, get involved, like in what you are passionate about. Like if it is emergency management, go to conferences, go and network. Cause I know our company, like we go to so many conferences around, you know, that have to do with public safety, emergency management, any of the GIS, all of that. So if you're interested in something like that, just go, you know, put yourself out there, go to those conferences and meet people. Um, and then use your networks at school from school to, um, you know, grad school. I think it was hard for both of us when we, especially like going to Chicago, like I had no network here at all. And a lot of the jobs I was finding wanted, you know, this is prior to COVID obviously. So it wasn't as big and a lot of them want like your MPH and either like a nursing background or a doctor, um, something like that. So um, just don't give up and really, you know, keep looking and um, just, yeah, I think networking is huge. I, a quick question that I am predicting, but I don't know if this is true or not, but I have noticed more public health jobs in consulting ever since the pandemic hit. hundred percent. Yeah. So it's I feel skyrocketed. like, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to be a top employer for our grads <laughs> in the future. Cause they um, want help. They, they need everyone, every company needs help. And so many people I think didn't, don't, or didn't know what public health was or didn't pay attention to it. And now that you know, we've been in this for over a year and a half. It, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. Have you all seen more projects come in since the pandemic? Yeah. Um, fortunate for us, you know, the pandemic didn't slow down our company at all. Yeah. Uh, it actually, I would say, if anything, helped produce more work, yeah. uh, which you know, can be a good and bad thing, obviously, due to the situation, but it definitely uh, gave us more work. Wow. And you said you're hiring soon? Uh, yeah. I'm, you know, our company always. is pretty flexible, always looking for applications. 
And okay. um, they may or may not be hiring at that exact moment, but they're really great about staying in touch and making sure to get you involved if they feel you're the right fit. And just go to the website and submit yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Feel free to also just reach out to us and we can send oh, you yeah. information um, and, you know, even talk to our leadership is so great about being so open with communication. We can kind of reach out to them and say, hey, we know someone with this skill or this background mm -hmm. and they would be open to talking in general. Great. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for sharing your career path. I just love connecting with you all after so many years and that you two <laughs> yeah. helped each other get jobs. And I remember when you, we met as students and it's so cool to oh, see yes. where you guys are at um, and doing amazing, amazing public health work. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having us. Yeah.